70 days of the transfer window left. Season ticket deadline renewal day today, which means one thing, big rumours and big rumours that have come. But before we get on to them, Charlie, it looks like Ryan Fredericks is very, very close to signing for West Ham. It's expected to be announced midweek next week, if you like. What's your thoughts on that? It's a free transfer, 25 English. Can't go wrong, can't go wrong can we? There's a mild amount of risk in it, given the fact that from what I like, I'm not going to act like I watch film every week. I don't watch that much championship football, if any, to be perfectly honest. But um, I seem to think that he can occasionally blow hot and cold. So there's the risk. But like, like you say, it's a and he's young enough to the point where if it goes right, then that's our right back sort of for ages, which we've needed for so long because we keep churning different right backs. And so to have finally what looks like a potential long term option is a fantastic deal. What about yourself, Tom? Um, the only criticism you can have of Zabaleta is he's just not that fast anymore. However, this guy's got pace and abundance. Is this exactly what we need? Yeah, this is this is exactly what we've been after. You know, um, Gonzo mentioned it last night on the uh, on the Cup of Tea show. Is he is pace, 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 and I think that it offers the almost complete opposite to Zabaleta and almost what we've had with Masuaku and Cresswell. You know, there might be a chance that Zabaleta moves to centre back sometimes, and you know, you can offer something different with 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 Fredericks down the right, but. From what I've seen of him this season, especially in the playoff final, he he, he has a turn of pace, and, and I think that's what we've needed. Young players who have that turn of pace, and obviously, you know, Fredericks is, is that player. So, it, for me, it, it's probably one of the better signings of the summer if we, if we get it over the line. The news that came out a couple of hours before the season ticket renewal deadline came along was that West Ham are interested in PSG's centre midfielder, Avia Pastore. Tom, is this... Some, there's a saying in life, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Is this too good to be true or do you think it has got legs? <laughs> um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know because we've 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 been down this road before, you know. Um, we've been linked with these players and it's never got over the line. You know, it's right on season ticket renewal um, day, which happens to be today. Um, so for me personally, I hope it has legs. Um, I think he's a fantastic footballer. I think he's been sort of thrown out of the lineup a bit at PSG. You know, he's got... Verratti and, and Rabio ahead of him. But from what I saw of him in the last couple of years in the Champions League mainly, he's a fantastic passer. He's got great vision. He can play in behind the striker. He's got that final ball. And we've almost missed that, having someone of that quality since Payet left. Um, Lanzini does have it on occasions, but Pastore looks as if he can deliver, I'd just say, hopefully a bit more you know consistently than, than, than Lanzini. So for me, I think he'd be the perfect signing. I think for the price that they want for him, he's only got a year left in his contract. His wages are only 100k a week. I say only, but it's something that we can match. But for me, we've lacked that presence in midfield. If that's what they want to sign him as, as a centre mid, you know, we've 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 lacked that creative passer from back there. You know, we do have it in Noble, who can spring a ball about now and again. But um, you know, to have somebody of his quality and his passing ability, I think would be uh, would be absolutely massive for us. So. This is the difference between having a manager like David Moyes and Pastore. You know, I saw Felipe Anderson, you know, made a comment the other day that he would want to play under someone like Manuel Pellegrini. That's probably the same for Pastore. If this was David Moyes, he wouldn't want it. So I think the fact that it's under Pellegrini, we have to take it seriously and that this rumour actually probably has quite a bit of legs to it. Tom, you said they're 180k a week. We can give him that. We probably can. But can we justify that? It's breaking our wage budget and some in order to get him in. I know it is, um, but... Unfortunately, it's uh, that's the thing. It, do you have to take the risk on those kind of players to bring them in? Can they free the wages up elsewhere? I, I'd say yes. I think this summer that we maybe have to break the wage budget to to, to get a few of these players in, um, because again, that's the difference. Because is you know it's between being a good team and a you know a next level team, and if that's the the way that they want to go, then then fair enough. But um, I've I think we have to pay it. I've personally. You know, the time is now to put the money on the table and put your money where your mouth is. And I think that if we want these kind of players, you know, because other other teams are going to see that this that, that he is on the table for 20 million. I know that uh, Chelsea or a few other teams are interested in him a couple of years ago. You know, they'll be sniffing around if you know he's available for that price. So I, I think that we we pay his wages this time. And um, Charlie, we've finally got a next level manager for our new stadium. Is this a next level signing? Yes. Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, I, I would class him sort of on a similar-ish level to João Mario, if I'm honest. Um, it's a very West Ham one in that it's on a cop price deal and he's got a mild amount of injury proneness to him. Um, but if you're looking for a guy who can provide the final killer passes in and around the area for, say, Hernandez, who would then, or, or Carroll in that sense, but just be get in the right position, then he's one of the best to do that, that we could conceivably... Yeah, I do really like the story, but um, I think for that price, there's going to be 
a load of teams that are hovering around him and, and he would probably prefer to go to them than us. And what about the wage thing for you, Charlie? I mean, this is my only personal concern. 180 grand a week. It's There's a domino effect. When you pay him, your, your, your next player in the squad is going to be thinking, well, I, I need this as well, Charlie. So can, can we afford, can we justify this much wages for one player? Let me jump in before that. You might have got confused when I said 100k a week, not 180. It's only 100k a week he's on apparently. No, no, it's 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 on. It's going around social media that he's on 180k a week. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie. So 180k a week. Would would you still go for it or would you not? Not for him. Um, our owners will probably do it at some point. Um, they showed with Hernandez when they're desperate enough, they'll pay anything basically. Um, but I don't see them paying around £20 million and also that amount of wages. I just can't see it happening. If he was on free, then I think they would probably consider it. Um, plus, he's South American, so we all know Sullivan would love that. But uh, if if his wages are anything north of 100 even at, even at 100 k I would be a bit uh, wary of whether our owners would do it or not. So that is definitely the most prohibitive, prohibitive factor. One player we were linked with heavily 12 months ago and a little bit in January may well be linked with us again very, very soon. Over in Portugal, the Sporting Lisbon fans decided to storm the training ground and attack their own players, which meant Das Boss missed the final. And it has resulted in some of the Sporting players cancelling their contract. And today it's emerged that William Cavallo has rescinded his contract with the club. Tom, William Cavallo, free transfer. This one has to be, you would imagine, a, a, a must-do. Yeah, this this is again is another is every every sign is like a must do. But my only issue is that you know if if he's taken his his contract away, lots of teams now are similar with Pastore. Lots of teams are going to come in for him. Um, Everton and a rumour to be interested. Man United maybe want another centre mid. Who knows? You know. Um, but if you're David Sullivan, you wanted him twelve months ago. Now you've got to go out and get him. Um, pay the wages, and he's wanted to come to the Premier League for a long time. And he, he is a top player. He is. You know, his passing ability he might not be the fastest at centre mids, but again, he's got great vision. He's a big, he's a big lad. I don't know how tall he is, but, you know, he, he's everything we, we would want in a centre mid. So for me, again, it's it's one of those must-haves, but will they be willing to break, I don't know, like we said, the wage budget to go get him? Because what is he going to want? Somewhere between 120 maybe and 160 a week? Because again, if we can't offer it, probably another team will, like an Arsenal or an Everton. So um, I think he's a must-have. Um, and, and again, we, we, we would have to go out and get him. A transfer we were linked with a couple of days ago, which made everybody sit up a little bit. Charlie was Lazio's Felipe Anderson. Um, do you know much about him? And even if you don't, what do you make of the transfer link? I don't know as much about him as I'd want to. I think I've seen him play maybe once, possibly twice at Bush. Um, but I've read up about him quite a lot over the last couple of years. And I'm not going to use the word pace merchant, but he's definitely Brazilian. He's fast and dribbles a lot. Um, he's not the greatest technically, um, but he's a significant upgrade on all of our wingers, possibly, if, um, unless you count on Alvich, I guess, at this point, who I think is probably slightly better than him. But if you're looking for a guy, we're, let's be honest, we're desperate for pace. We're desperate for wingers as well. Wingers is the big one. We've got such a lack of wingers. He can play on either side. He would be an excellent addition, especially at his age. He's about to come into his peak. Um, if that was to go ahead and he was to look as good as he possibly could be and reach his potential, then that's that's a no-brainer. It's got to be done, really. Well, four potential no-brainers I would just discuss there. But while there's people coming in, there's also people linked to going out. And we're going to discuss the latest two. Um, Tom, Winston Reid apparently could be on his way to Turkey. Injury prone, we're heavily linked with centre-backs across the board. Would you be sorry to see, see him go? He was considered our best defender mm -hmm. while on form as little as a year ago, if you like. Yeah, I think I think he's he's a bit like Ginger's knees. He's, he's almost written himself into West Ham folklore, you know, with with the Millwall goals or you know the last goal at Upton Park. He will always be in the memory of West Ham fans. He's been here for a long time. A lot of people don't forget we signed him after the last World Cup. I think it was was it or not last, but the 2010 World Cup. Um, so you know he's been down in the Championship. He's been with us in the Premiership. He's he's proven to be probably one of our best centre backs we've had at the club in in years, probably since the Rio days and Anton Ferdinand. You know so. I, I'd be really sad to see him go. I think it's almost, if we were to get rid of him a couple of years ago, we would probably sort of sat back and said, ah, oh, you know, this is a bad move. You know, he's, potentially he could go to a bigger club. Obviously, he was linked with Arsenal at one point. But now, after the injury-prone seasons, it's almost, we've not heard or seen much of him, you know, this season. And Declan Rice has almost come into the fore and he's been the main man back there. So, although I'd be, you know, inclined to be quite upset if, if he was to go, it's almost now as if, you know, do we push you out the door and bring new players in? And I'm sure he 
probably won't get the same fee as he might have done a couple of years ago. But no, I'd, I'd be sad to see him go. But I think with the injury proneness, you know, and us being linked to all these centre backs, I think it might be the time for uh, for Reedy to move on. Charlie's is one of the players that if he does go, we're going to look back and think, what could he have been if he didn't have all those injuries? And also, like I just said to Tom, would you be sad to see him go? Or do you think we should keep him around the squad? I, I, I think we have to keep him. I don't think there's any answers about that. If we're looking to get rid of all of our young centre-backs and we're still like faffing about Collins has gone and other stuff, letting go of him would be a massive mistake. He is an injury-prone player, uh, very injury-prone at this point, unfortunately. But like as Tom mentioned, at his prime, he was seen as possibly the guy to come in and sort out Arsenal's defensive problems. Like that was how good he was playing at one point, and he would could have gone on a free transfer and ended up staying. And he he's he's under I don't want to say uh, underappreciated is probably a better word than underrated. I think he's a very very good centre back on his day. Unfortunately, this season, arguably last season, he's not been anywhere near as good. But when we're as thin as we are right now. We're not going to get a significant free for him. He's not on that significant amount of wages where we could just go and splash the cash on someone else. I think letting go of him would be a really stupid mistake. Well, one goalkeeper that was involved in the Hoka Koke last season has gone back to Manchester City. The other Adrian could be heading back to Spain. Charlie, what do you make of this one? Would it be risky, considering we haven't replaced Joe Hart yet, would it be risky to suddenly be needing to bring in two goalkeepers in the same transfer window? Again, it's just stupid. We're too, we're too we're too thin to even start considering selling people that we've got. Like I'm saying, Reed, where we've got conceivably two centre backs ahead of him in Marcelo Valbona. There's no one else as a goalkeeper. We can talk about how good Nathan Trot might be and could be, and I'm all for giving him chances. And I would I would even consider making him second choice if we're going to go that route. But making him first choice with no one around him is suicidal. It's just crazy. So we have to keep him. Um, I wouldn't begrudge him wanting to go back to Spain. Um, I remember his press conference when he left. He was like crying and everything. So he clearly loves it there. Um, and I wouldn't begrudge him wanting to go back. But uh, we can't. We, we just can't even consider letting him go unless we bring in one possibly like say two keepers what about yourself tom um you, could you argue that he deserves to go back to spain considering how in and out the side he's been and also but would it be suicide almost in order to for west ham to let it happen yeah it's it's a double-edged sword really because i think charlie's absolutely correct it's almost similar to the really thing you know you don't want it to be the squad to be too thin before going into pre-season my only qualms quickly before about the read thing was that only would I get rid of him if we brought in a couple of centre backs that we've been linked with. Um, but as for Adrian, we we don't have another keeper other than Nathan Trot. It would be suicide to get rid of a keeper. I know right before the World Cup, players' prices are going to go up. Which keeper can we even look at at that point? So it's a shame because again, Adrian is another one that's probably you know etched himself into folklore by his attitude, the way that he is, the penalty against Everton. You know, he's a likable guy, and I think that he deserves first team football. Um, but I think to allow him to go before we've even looked at getting another keeper in, I think is, is suicide on our part. And look, he's a top keeper on his day, but he has some mistakes that he makes with, with you know his attitude and his flappy hands at times. You know, that's part of the Adrian package. But I wouldn't also begrudge him if he wanted to go back to Betis and, and, and to fork out the rest of his career in Spain, because I do think he deserves it. But as far as a West Ham standpoint goes, you can't get rid of him whilst we still don't have a, another first team keeper uh, at the club. Perfect. And that's it from us. That's the West Ham Transfer Gossip. Up, and that's you up to date. We'll be with you all summer. There's 70 days to go. We've got a big show at the end of it with more to come on that one. But for the 69 in between, we'll be here giving you the latest and I'll be getting opinions from the guests that's on the show as well. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And since it's Javier Hernandez's birthday, well, that's not why I've done this video, but it's on your screen right now. You want to go click on it, have a look. It's under four minutes long. It's having a look at Hernandez's first season at the London Stadium for West Ham, see how he got on. But that's been Charlie, that's been Tom, I've been Jill, we've been Hammers Chat, and we'll see you very shortly. Shortly.